I had promised that when I had the flyball governor completely assembled with this dual oscillating engine, I would make a video of it. And today is the day for the video. Now, I made this flyball governor a number of years ago, and the intent at that time was that it would run with a gasoline engine. And so the gearing on it is not absolutely right for an air or steam powered engine. And you can see it there, I know this is in the way, I have a two to one reduction between the input shaft and the stem post. So it's actually turning slower than it should be for use on a steam engine. Uh, it would have been better to maintain a one-to-one -one reduction there, but you work with what you've got. Now, a flyball governor is a constant speed regulator. And what that means, it will try and hold the engine at a constant speed, regardless of whether a load is applied to the engine or when the load is taken away from the engine. It will try and hold the engine at a constant speed. And there are a number of things that determine what that speed is. One of them being the weight of the brass balls. A second being this return spring right here, which always returns the springs to a zero setting. You can't really depend on gravity to do that. You always have to have something in there besides gravity. And I've learned that through bitter experience. And the other determining factor is how rapidly things are revolving. Now, that can be taken care of between the gear ratio of your driving pulley on the engine and the driven pulley on the flyball governor. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the engine and I'm going to ramp it up to about 25 PSI, which I've learned is a comfortable speed to have this governor work. And then I will demonstrate what happens. But as it speeds up, the balls will fly out the balls will make this lever pivot and it will shove the steam valve down. Right now in its state as it is, the steam valve is wide open. There's no restriction in the flow. As the engine starts to speed up and this lifts up, it gradually shuts the steam valve off until it reaches a balance between the engine RPM the centrifugal force trying to throw these balls out away from the stem post and the pressure of that spring. Now I've learned that this works best at about 25 PSI, so I'm going to turn it up here. I've got my hand on the regulator. And you can see what has happened. The, the engine is running and the fly balls have moved out under centrifugal force moving the lever and pushing this down to restrict the amount of steam flowing through because we don't want the engine to run away with itself. Now I'm going to put a load on the engine and when I do you'll see the flyball governor react to it and try to allow more steam through to maintain the engine speed. You see how the lever moves and how the steam valve moves? Now, not only does it try and maintain engine speed when the load is put on it, but as soon as the load is taken off, it maintains the engine speed by lowering the amount of steam or air that can flow through here. So there's quite a dramatic difference in the position of the valve when the engine is running and when it's not. When it's not, everything closes down when it is, watch the lever, it flies back up and regulates the steam valve. This is the, I'm using air here and not steam, but the words are interchangeable for what I'm doing. So the air pressure comes in here, it routes through this internal valve, and then it comes down to the engine. And again, if I put a load on it, you'll see that it tries to give more steam to the engine to pick the speed up. When I take the load away, it moves and gives it less steam so it doesn't run away with itself. 
I'll shut it down one more time and you can see as soon as I shut it down it pulls this up so that it would be a wide open flow as soon as I turned it on it comes up and it restricts that flow so the engine doesn't run away with itself I hope this has made some sense to you and thanks for watching